Hello there, and welcome back to The Chaps Guide, the channel where we explore the topics of men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. And today, well, I'm here to pose to you a question. Should you buy an overcoat? Because if I was to ask that question generally, it's not as easy as you might think to answer, because we live in an era where there seem to be ever more capable technical fabrics and performance materials which seem to make the overcoat obsolete in the modern era. Yet, I love wearing them and I think you should consider adding one to your wardrobe too in the future. So, I'm going to put some points to you today that I think can help you answer that question in the positive and that question being, should you buy an overcoat? So the first reason why I think you should consider adding an overcoat to your wardrobe, if you don't already own one, is the obvious fact that they have been traditionally associated with the best dressed men in society. You look back at all of those images of, you know, those men who we now consider to be the best dressed of all time, the Cary Grants, the people of that nature, of the golden era of men's style. And you will always see them wearing an overcoat. And that traditional association with being well-dressed is there and it elevates the look of any clothing that you wear an overcoat with, uh, be it a suit or informal clothing or whatever. But the overcoat marks you out as a person of distinction when it comes to your sartorial elevation. And definitely by wearing an overcoat, you will stand out from the herd as somebody who knows how to dress well and not only that, but knows how to keep warm at the coldest time of the year. Now, the second reason why I think you should consider adding an overcoat to your wardrobe is practicality. There can be no doubt that an overcoat is possibly the most stylish of all men's outerwear in the cooler months of the year. But do they keep you warm? Well, I can tell you absolutely that they do because most overcoats are worn quite long. Um, the one I'm wearing now is worn below the knee, means it keeps all that warm air close to my body much longer than most traditional utility jackets or garments that people tend to wear as outer coats in the winter. They are also made of rather heavy um, gauge natural materials. Typically they're made of wool or cashmere or a blend of those two materials, which of course originate in the natural world. They keep the animals that donated them to us rather warm. So when we reduce them into an overcoat, they keep us naturally warm. It's a natural fabric. It allows your body to perspire. It doesn't have that sort of closed cell material that you get with some artificial garments which tend to be a little bit sweaty if you wear them and you get hot. Wool, great natural material, allows you to perspire naturally. So there are some really good practical reasons why you should own an overcoat. Not just because of the aesthetics but because they work remarkably well. Now my third reason for suggesting that you need an overcoat is the fact that they are of course very many styles of overcoat available to meet your personal requirements. You can have different colours, you can have different lengths, you can have many of the features personalised to the overcoat, not least things like single breasted like this Crombie overcoat that I'm wearing or double breasted, whatever you prefer. They can have contrasting collars, they can have breast pockets, they can have notched lapels, uh, peak lapels. There are a whole host of individual elements to each overcoat which can be chosen for your own personal style, which is something which you can't really say about a parka. It'll either be one colour or another. You can't really choose much more than that when it comes to customization. When it comes to the overcoat, there's an overcoat out there which suits your style. You've just got to go looking for it. Now, my fourth reason for suggesting the overcoat is its versatility. Now, I know most people think of the overcoat as something of a formal garment. And in that regard, there is nothing more true, in fact. Nothing looks better with a suit as an outer garment than an overcoat. And absolutely, if you're attending any formal or semi-formal event in the winter months, the overcoat is the perfect item. Not only does it keep you warm, but it really does 
elevate your look to the smart when you're in the outdoors, which is something you can't say about a parka or most other gentlemen's utility garments for the cold weather. But they're not just to be worn with formal clothing. Don't forget, the overcoat can be worn with a sweater, with a sports jacket underneath. It can even look great with a hoodie or even just denim jeans. It's not an entirely formal item. It is actually incredibly versatile. It depends on your confidence and the way that you wear it. Remember, the overcoat is very much a case of function over form. It's about keeping you warm, at the colder times of year, but adding an element of class and style in your delivery of that warmth and looking good in the outdoors. So don't discount an overcoat if you're somebody who doesn't wear a suit very often. It's not necessarily the case. Your overcoat can be employed across the broader range of your other wardrobe essentials and it can really make you look good and keep you warm in those cooler months. Now my fifth and final reason for suggesting the overcoat to you as a great outdoor winter garment is the fact that they are such a wonderful item to accessorize in the winter. Now most outer clothes tend to be of quite a neutral color so that you can wear the whole variety of your other clothes with them and the colors don't argue. So you know without a doubt probably the most common colour of an overcoat will be some form of grey from charcoal grey to light grey uh, and this makes them a wonderful blank canvas to accessorise. Now the most obvious thing to put with an overcoat is a wonderful scarf like I'm wearing here which adds that sort of little flash of colour which brings the outfit alive and you know that overcoat is just there in the background being that, as I say, great blank canvas. But there are other parts of this overcoat that can be used to accessorize as well. We've got these great large lapels, which offer a great opportunity. I mean, this coat has got a, has got a buttonhole, so a boutonniere of some kind, even a, a natural flower can be worn. Uh, and some overcoats also have a breast pocket, so a pocket square is an option too. So they are great items to bring some personalization to a time of year when most people are wearing drab colors in their outer clothes and you can bring a punch of passion in the colors that you can add to your overcoat. So I hope I've given you some thoughts there about perhaps adding an overcoat to your collection because they can be a great addition to your outer garmentry for the cooler months of the year. Now if you are thinking about buying one I've got a few tips for you there. First of all think about the colour. Now I would suggest as we've said you know the, the greys or perhaps the browns these can be worn across the broader spectrum of your clothing and allows them to mix and match with pr pretty much everything you own. So think carefully about that colour and think carefully about the material. Now if you're about to buy an overcoat and you don't know what it's made of have a look at that label. If it's mostly made of an unnatural material you know polyester or acrylics or whatever I would have a little bit of a thought there. Without doubt, the best overcoats are made of wool or cashmere. Unfortunately, that means they tend to be a little bit more expensive, but as we've said, they are the best for keeping you warm, allowing your body to breathe. Natural fabrics are naturally the best at this time of year. And finally, think about that size that you're wearing. So if you like to wear uh, your clothes quite tight to the body, with an overcoat, don't forget to bear in mind that you will be layering it with other garments, particularly a suit, which can add, you know, another size to your body. So if you typically wear perhaps a size 40, think about sizing up to a 42. The obvious thing to do is to wear the clothes that you will be wearing with that overcoat when you go to try it on before you make the purchase. That way you won't make any mistakes and you'll get the best size to suit you. So, there we go. I hope you have had some thoughts now about buying an overcoat and it can help you keep warm, snugly and rakishly good looking and smart and stylish in the colder months. If you have, I would ask you to give us a thumbs up and perhaps leave us a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe. That way you won't miss any of our future material. So, until the next time, I bid you well, looking stylish and warm in your overcoats, and I'll see you very soon.